Welcome back everyone. My name is Kenny Cormandy and I have the YouTube channel Meyer Gun Reviews and today we are going to review the second generation Black Ops Sniper from Ignite. Uh, the first generation had a steel spring piston. This one has what they call their power piston. It's uh, their version of the gas spring. And let's take a closer look at this rifle. As you can see, this gun has the same muzzle brake as the predecessor. It is not a silencer, it is just a muzzle brake. Mounted on the 18 inch rifled steel barrel. You got a 35 caliber opening and the rifled steel barrel is recessed one quarter inch in there. Uh, the barrel seems to be of all steel construction except for the muzzle brake. The stock is all composite material. We do have the steel weaver mounts on the side for the bipods which are uh, extendable from 8 to 10 inches and they're fully adjustable. You just twist here and it'll drop down as much as 2 inches. And then just to kick them back out of the way they will go forward or backward. Okay, here you can see the false magazine. There is a tab right here which you can press down and press forward and this bottom piece will slide forward. There is a place to store your hex wrench to adjust your adjustable cheek piece. This gun has the same lousy, long, stiff, single stage trigger that his predecessor had. This one feels a little bit worse. Uh, let me show you what that looks like for travel. Yeah, the gun has a very wide pistol grip type handle. Uh, men with uh, large hands should enjoy that. Uh, in the composite stock you got the Black Ops logo, your fake ejector port, a fake uh, bolt which is just bolted on. There's a bolt back here on the back side and a six inch uh, weaver rail for mounting your optics. And then the composite stock in the back has the uh, adjustable cheek rest. And it also has a very nicely formed uh, butt pad on it. Uh, this gun weighs 9.6 pounds. Uh, you add the bipod and your optics and you're up well over 10 pounds, about 10 and a half pounds. Uh, like I say the barrel length is 18 inches long. The gun's overall length is 44 inches. It comes from the factory with this 4x32 scope on uh, weaver mounts and it does work satisfactorily at uh, say 15 yards uh, to give the gun a little bit better chance on the accuracy test I mounted my Bug Buster 3 to 9 by 32 adjustable objective scope on it to give me a little bit larger objective and clear reticle they claim the gun is rated at 1250 feet per second using premium alloy pellets. The old gun was rated at 1000 feet per second using lead pellets. And this gun does come very close to its uh, claim for feet per second. I'm going to put up the uh, numbers right now and I'll let you look over them and then we'll highlight some of the pellets. Okay, with a claimed up to 1250 feet per second with the alloy pellets, we use the Hypermax 5.2 grain from RWS. We got a high of 1242 feet per second, just 8 feet off the manufacturer's claim, which is very good. We had an extreme spread of 19.21 
and a standard deviation of 7.28. That gave us an impressive 17.53 foot-pounds muzzle energy. Shooting the standard RWS Hobby 7 grain, we had an up to 1,064 feet per second with an average of 1,057 feet per second. That is exactly 50 feet per second faster than the spring version. Extreme spread was 13.68, standard deviation 5.83, and also an impressive 17.37 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. Now this gun shot the Crossman Premier hollow points very well. They did not do good on the crony test as far as consistency. Uh, a high of 1001, a low of 981.5. That's a 20.47 extreme spread. But when I was doing the crony test, most of them were up in the 990s and one or two would drop down to the low 980s. So I think that's more defective pellets than it is the gun's ability to shoot that pellet. And also the Crossman Premier Heavy shot very well. Uh, it was very consistent across the crony. The Premier Heavy 10.5s averaged 854.7 feet per second with a standard deviation of only three. The extreme spread was 7.44, giving a 17.04 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. Now, the most consistent pellet was the Beeman Silver Arrow 11.57 grain. Uh, that had an extreme spread of 5.24 and a standard deviation of 1.73. But that pellet only generated 16.79 foot-pounds muzzle energy. But downrange at 20 yards, it'll still be equal to or greater than some of the lighter pellets because of its weight. The most powerful pellet was the JSB Match Diablo Exact. That pellet weighs 8.44 grains. It had a low of 980 feet per second, a high of 992.6 feet per second, an average of 986 feet per second, a 12.61 foot per second extreme spread, standard deviation was 5.09. That gave us an impressive 18.22 foot pounds muzzle energy. In my initial uh, accuracy test, it, it did not do well, but in the on camera test, it did very well. So, why don't we take a look at my uh, preliminary target shooting and then we'll take a look at the live target shooting. The first one I tried was the Gamo Rocket 9.6 grain and that was a .76 inch shot pattern. My second was the Crossman Premier Heavy 10.5 grain and the four shots were within .47 inch center to center and the overall pattern with one pulled was .7. The H&N Barracuda 10.65 grains had a few really tight together, but the overall pattern was 0.72 inches. And then the Beam and Silver Arrow 11.57 uh, grain, they had an overall 1.1 inch uh, pattern. And then we had the H&N Barracuda Hunter Extreme that was a 1.07 inch pattern. The H&N Field Target Trophy had three grouped real tight together but an overall pattern of 0.72 inches. And then the Crossman Premier Hollow Points had a 0.6 inch pattern. And then the H&N Curl Magnum it had a .107 inch pattern, but three pellets went through the center hole, so hold and trigger operation greatly affects uh, how accurate this gun is. Okay, now let's take a look at my on-camera accuracy test.
Okay, here's the JSB Diablo Match Exact 8.44 grain. They were our most powerful pellet in a 0.62 inch uh, shot pattern. The H&N Field Target Trophy, which had our smallest extreme spread, uh, that was a 0.89 inch pattern. The Crossman Premier Hollow Point 7.9 grain, we went from a 0.62 inch pattern to, to the live shot 1.05 inch. And then the Crossman Premier Heavy 10.5 grain, we have now have a 0.95 grain. Uh, inch shot pattern so I did better yesterday with my overall testing all the pellets than I did today this trigger is it really takes some getting used to now as you can see the gun can be accurate uh, I haven't shot it enough to really get used to this trigger uh, I'm going to experiment with it and see if I can reduce the travel on this trigger a little bit more. But uh, for such a lousy trigger, the gun is very accurate. I wish they would put a better trigger in there and make it a two stage, not just a single stage. Because with a single stage and that much travel, it's really difficult to get a grip on it. Uh, I think if somebody practiced with it a lot, they might get a lot better. The gun does deserve better optics. The 4x32 works, but uh, I would rather see a 3 to 9 by 40 if nothing else on it, uh, even if it doesn't have an adjustable objective. The adjustable cheek piece is very nice. I kind of miss the extendable stock and the adjustable butt pad on it. That made the first generation gun so much more comfortable to shoot it was just it made such a difference you know if they had that on there and a good trigger they'd have a two hundred dollar gun on their hands and they could sell it easily for that if they brought that adjustable feature back and put a good trigger in this gun the gun does put up power numbers uh, and this is uh, with 18.22 foot-pounds muzzle energy, it's uh, far and above all the other 1,000 foot-per-second springers. And they claim 44 foot-pounds of cocking effort. I measured it multiple times at 41 pounds, and that was after shooting it maybe 50 times. That's when I measured it, and I got 41 pounds for most of the stroke. And then the last third of the stroke, it would drop down to about 35 pounds. So it's a little bit easier to finish it off once you get through that first two thirds. Uh, not bad for the power. Uh, the gas piston will make it so you can uh, cock it, load it, and head out in the woods. If you're going to carry this gun in the woods, I would definitely look at putting a sling on it because uh, it is a heavy rifle but it is an accurate rifle and uh, would be a very good hunter. I think this one's got enough power where with a heavier pellet you could probably take on a raccoon with it. Is the gun worth the money? Uh, $149.99. Uh, yeah, it is worth it because uh, you've got to figure at least $25 for the bipods. That makes it a $125 gun with a gas piston. A usable scope and a really unique design. The uh, polymer construction of this, or composite construction, seems to be pretty durable and it, it feels pretty good. The gun is a little bit on the loud side. Uh, most of the pellets that I shot were 98.4 to 98.9 decibels. That's a little bit borderline loud for being backyard friendly, but not that bad. Uh, at least it's uh, they kept it under 100 decibels. They could also look at making an actual silencer instead of just the muzzle brake on it. And I think people would pay for this gun with a few improvements. A uh, good two-stage trigger, the adjustable butt pad and extendable stock and a silencer on it uh, with this kind of power and accuracy they would have a good sellable $200 gun on their hands but right now it's $149.99 uh, both on their website they seem to be out 
on their website, but Pyramid Air, Air Gun Depot, Dick Sporting Goods, Amazon.com, they've all got them in stock, so it's a readily available gun, and it is fun to shoot, uh, just you need to practice on that trigger. So that is basically my review of the second generation Black Ops Sniper from Ignite. Thank you for watching and have fun shooting.